الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد The believer in accordance with their brothers and sisters in Islam is like a body as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described as like one body and the believer as a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described in other ahadith in relation to his brother and sister believers is like a building it's like a single structure as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al Muslim, Akh Muslim, Yishidduhu Babahu Baba. That the believer, that the Muslim, to their brother Muslim, that they strengthen one another. That they're brothers and they strengthen one another. Al Muslim, Akh Muslim, Yishidduhu Babahu Baba. The Muslim is a brother to the Muslim and they support one another. And that's why it's imperative that we speak out against the destruction of one another, which is the opposite of that brotherhood. That in fact we have so much discord between the community, وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ May Allah forgive us and guide us, and we seek refuge in Allah from this discord, that we have to attempt to rectify the situation before the brotherhood is broken down to pure enmity. We live in a time where there is so much discord and differences between the Muslims. And this is not something new. And this is something that was prophesied by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and it's not something which is a good thing. The Prophet Sallallahu said, If tarakat al-Yahud ala ita wa sara'in farqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara ala thnatayn wa sara'in farqa, wa sataftariku hadihi umma ala thalatha wa sara'in farqa kullaha fi al-Nar al-Wahida. So the Prophet Sallallahu said that the Jews broke into 71 sects and the Christians into 72 sects, and my umma would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. قالوا من من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه وصحابي اليوم. So the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who are they, Messenger of Allah, meaning those who are saved from that division and saved from being in the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ said, those who are upon what I'm upon and 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 my Sunnah and that which my companions are upon. رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين. So following the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the with the understanding of the Sahaba and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'een what they had as ijma this is what is an obligation upon us as Muslims and this will help us to alleviate our pain and our suffering and it will help us to rectify the the discord that we are experiencing in the ummah and so brotherhood is what Islam is based upon we have the Jumu'ah prayer we have the order from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَسُمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَقُوا And hold on all of you together to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So we're ordered to be brothers. And we're ordered not to divide into groups and sects to, to innovate in the religion. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فُرَدْ Whoever um, innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So innovation causes discord. Innovation causes fitna. Innovation causes a break in the ties between the brothers, between uh, the Islamic Brotherhood. So we have to avoid those things which causes a division between Muslims. And we have to hold on to the rope of Allah. We have to hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah. We have to hold on to the Dawah to Tawheed, to the call to Tawheed, the call to the oneness of Allah, monotheism. And we can't depart and deviate from that. And may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings. But however, we have to strive to always come back and always adhere to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to adhere to. So, those are the ways by avoiding those sinful things, we can avoid the discord which is 
uh, result, resulting enmity between the brothers and, and breaking the brotherhood and breaking the ties between the believers. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave us beautiful advice because now in this time we see so many people every time someone makes a mistake from Ahlul Sunnah everyone jumps up, Ahlul Bid'ah jumps up and attacks them and others from Ahlul Sunnah, some of their brothers and sisters from Ahlul Sunnah attack them and belittle them and try to destroy their reputation and, and whatever and this has to cease وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ you know this is a fitna from the shaitan, it's a trial from the shaitan and let's look at the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in which he described, in which he narrated that the, what the Prophet sallallahu said in relation to how the brotherhood would be broken and in relation to how the, uh, the, those traits which we should avoid as brothers we should not belittle one another we should not turn our backs on one another we should not destroy one another's reputation we should if we see a mistake by our brother advise him or our sister advise her but now we see so many websites that have just sprung up which their whole purpose is to destroy this one and destroy that one and we see it in every language we see it in English we see it in Arabic we see it in uh, uh, Indonesian it really doesn't matter that there are some of our brothers and sisters who at times the zeal and the love for refuting innovation which is a beautiful thing if you are ahlan lidharik if you are a person who has the ability to you have the knowledge you have the azima you have the determination and you have the uh, you have the ability in, in either through writing by keeping it ilmi, knowledge based or through your tongue that you have the you are able to articulate it so we see this fitna how many people it has destroyed yesterday so and so was on the sunnah now they're not yesterday sister so and so was from Ahlul Sunnah now she's not yesterday this one was Salafi but now they're not because of a mistake they made or because of they were seen with so and so or whatever the situation was now we're not saying that people cannot leave the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. this is clear this is clear that someone can one day be from Ahlul Sunnah and the next day not from Ahlul Sunnah they can actually leave the sunnah and they can leave the fold of Islam even we know this, there's Nawaqid al-Islam the fuqaha have written extensively about this in the books of jurisprudence but let's get back to the matter of hand, at hand, which is this brotherhood, this beloved brotherhood. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tu hasidu wa la tu jasidu wa la tu najishu wa la tu baghdu wa la tu dabru wa la bay' ba'dukum ala bay' ba'd. Wa kunu ibad Allahi ikhwanin. Al Muslim akhul Muslim. La yadlamuhu wa la yakhdhuluhu wa la yakhdhubuhu wa la yahkuruhu. At taqwaha huna wa yashiru ila sadri thalatha marat. Bi hasbi imrin min al shar. And yahkira akhuhu Muslim. Kullu Muslim ala Muslim haram dimmuhu wa maluhu wa iruduhu ruahu Muslim In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which shows us the important manners the Islamic manners and the Islamic brotherhood and the haq of your brothers and sisters in Islam It was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not, have, do not envy one another and do not um, do not, uh, you know, basically sell. It's a it's a type of uh, selling in which you uh, you bargain in order to make your brother or sister uh, have to pay a higher price. And do not hate one another. Do not have enmity. Do not turn your backs on one another. And do not sell. When your brother has, has made a purchase, do not attempt to bargain and uh, to, 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 make, to make the sale twice. To, to bargain and... Uh, make uh, nullify the bargaining of, of your brother and be brothers be brothers be uh, 
وَكُنُّوا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And be brothers and, and slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be, you know, that Islamic brotherhood. Al-Muslim akhu Muslim. The Muslim is a brother to his brother Muslim. And he doesn't belittle him, nor does he lie uh, about him, nor does he uh, try to uh, try to deceive him, nor does he, uh, you know, to to probably the best way to describe it that he belittles him, or uh, to to try to make him small or her small and, and ruin in their reputation. A taqwa hauna, and then the Prophet وسلم, said that uh, taqwa, God fearfulness, is here. He, and he pointed to his heart three times, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, showing us that, that that is the taqwa, the iman. It's here, it's in the heart. We yashiru ila sadri thalatha marrat. And of course, we know from Ahlul Sunnah that the taqwa, that the iman, is on the limbs, it's on the tongue, and it's in the heart. And then he said, it is sufficient for a person, sufficient, the, the shar, the evil, that uh, that's enough uh, uh, of evil that a person can, can do by belittling his brother or, or cursing his brother. Every Muslim upon their brother Muslim is, they are sacred. A Muslim is sacred. Their blood, their wealth, and their reputation, their reputation or their honor. And this was collected in Muslim. In this hadith, we have an abundance or many benefits. And it shows us that those traits that we see that are uh, being uh, proliferated and being spread throughout the ummah are not traits that are uh, these are not praiseworthy traits. These are traits that are mithmoon. These are traits that are sinful, that are un unpraiseworthy traits of cursing one another, of belittling one another, of destroying one another's reputation, of uh, spreading and ghiba and namima. We know ghiba and namima, spreading tales in order to spread facade and spread evil. Spreading speech in order to spread evil is one of the reasons people get uh, punished in the graves, as the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, "Murr al-Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala kabrin fqal innuhum li yuadban wa ma yuadban fi kabir fa amma ahru huma fa kana la yistatru min al-bow wa amma akhru fa kana fa kana yimshi bin namima." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went behind, went by two graves. He passed by the graves, and he said, "Verily, they're being punished in the grave." And they're not being punished for something that the people think uh, think is a big thing. As for one, he didn't used to make proper tahara, proper istinja, or that the urine used to splash on his garment. And as for the other one, he used to spread namima, meaning he used to spread speech in order amongst the people in order to spread evil. So this is not the trait of, 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 of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is not the trait of the believer. This is not the trait of those people who tamasik bi kitabi Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in fact, Ahl sunnah, they hold on to the hablillah jami'an wa la tafarraku. They hold on to the rope of Allah, which is the Qur'an. And as some of the Mufassirin say, it's the sunnah. And it, that includes both. That is the Qur'an and the sunnah. That, that's what Ahl sunnah they hold on to. And they don't belittle one another. And they have the brotherhood and they love one another. And they avoid those traits that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. They don't make hajr of one another for something easy. But rather, they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there's going to be harm, uh, if they're going to receive harm by mixing with this individual, or that it's going to spread a harm, or if it is a punishment to, uh, to punish that individual, you, you cut them off in order that they will so that they will remember and they will reflect, and maybe they will come back to the sunnah, and maybe they'll leave their ma'asi and dhunub. But hajr is not something to be taken lightly, especially if those people don't even know the wabit, don't even know the criterion for hajr, that they quickly, their brothers made a mistake, their sisters made a mistake, khalas, hajr. I don't give them salams anymore, I don't greet them anymore, I don't see them anymore, I don't speak to them, I don't... This is, uh, this is uh, a very dangerous thing. 
and it's very serious that we have to avoid falling into the traits of Ahl al-Bid'ah because in fact we find the Khawarij, what do they do? They made takfir of, of, of people who differed with them. So we don't want to be people who make, uh, make tabdir or takfir, you know, call people apostates or call people innovators just because they don't agree with us. If they don't agree with the sunnah, that's something else. But just because they don't sit with us or they don't agree with us, no. That's not, that's not what uh, this, this uh, beautiful uh, uh, form of Islamic uh, uh, mannerisms is for. It's not for calling to yourself, it's not calling to your jama'at, not calling to your imam. But in fact, it's to maintain the Islamic Brotherhood. And it's to preserve kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to protect and preserve the Muslims. So, in this hadith, there's many benefits as the scholars mention. And as, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that we should not uh, belittle one another and make fun of one another in istihza. And the reason I want to mention it, I've seen some things on the YouTube where some people, they didn't even deal with the issue. They talked about certain du'at and certain people who they had taken off the sunnah because of mistakes they made or because uh, they, they, uh, or because they felt they made mistakes. It, it could be either one of the issues. But in, in the particular case of one particular individual who's a known da'i on the sunnah, who has their, their usul is on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, they called the kitab Allah, was sunnah to Rasul ﷺ, with minhaj al-salaf al And, of course, they make mistakes as everyone makes mistakes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. That all the children of Adam make mistakes, and the best of those who make mistakes is those who repent. That this individual is, uh, uh, so the person was making fun of their gestures, or making fun of their, the way they move their lips, or the way they do this, the way they do their hair. Where did this come from? Which sunnah did they come get this from? Which scholar did they get from Ahlul Sunnah that teaches this adab? I've never seen this. I didn't see this from scholars that I had this chance to see with, with my own eye. Sheikh Muqbid bin Hadi al Wadi didn't do it. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Shaykh Abdul Masin al Abad. He, didn't, he doesn't do it and he didn't do it. Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan. We've seen him. He doesn't do that. Uh, we've seen many scholars from younger scholars and older scholars. Many of our elders. Shaykh Saleh, uh, Shaykh Saleh uh, Suhaini. He doesn't do that. We don't see this from many of our scholars. We don't see this from Shaykh Ubaid al We don't see this from any of our mashayikh. We don't see them making new names and, 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 and belittling the people because of their looks or this one is this color and this one is this tall and this one is short and this one is fat and whatever. But instead, if you're going to refute someone, refute them uh, with knowledge, knowledge based. So going back to the fuayid of the hadith, one of the fuayid, one of the benefits of this hadith is that it shows us the impermissibility of hasid, of, of being, uh, of having envy of, of your brother and sisters in order to take away their na'mah, the na'mah that Allah has favored them with. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is wujub salamat al-sadr, is that it's an obligation to have, uh, to have a peaceful or a heart that is a comforted heart, that a heart that it doesn't have these other, this prejudice, this hatred, this envy, this, uh, this in inclination towards belittling others and destroying others and their reputation and cursing them in their family. We're breaking the Muslim Brotherhood. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is Hadr min al ghadam is that it teaches us it is a warning against being angry and letting our anger overtake us. That we should be cautious of that. Also, this hadith shows us uh, that it, it also another benefit of this hadith is it is a stern warning against resembling. Uh, those people who are enemies of Islam. You know, those people who hate Muslims, those people like the Shia, the Rafida, they hate Muslims. They hate the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. And they speak against the Sahaba. They're the ones who have parties and uh, sing and dance cursing Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So we should not emulate them or imitate them and do this with our own people from Ahl Sunnah. Nor even the people from Ahl Bid'ah we shouldn't have that much enmity. Because al wala wal bara when we love for the sake of Allah and we hate for the sake of Allah it's in accordance with someone's obedience and someone's disobedience. We love the people in accordance with their obedience to Allah and their tamasik bi sunnah. And we dis 
dislike them in accordance with their disobedience to Allah and their bu'd on the sunnah, their, their, far, their, their being away from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, their bid'ah, their kufr, whatever they are falling into. We, we dislike them in accordance with that. So people mutafawwateen, they have different levels. And so we have to be cautious of following the way of the people who have enmity towards Islam and enmity towards Muslim and following the way of the khawarij. Also, this hadith shows us that we should be pleased with the uh, uh, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. And that this hadith also uh, shows us that we should, uh, between the Muslims, that it's an obligation between Muslims to have good Mu'amalat, uh, you know, work with one another with, with goodness and kindness and gentleness and rifq and lean. As Shaykh Abdul Masan has a beautiful book, Rifq, uh, rifq and Ahlul Sunnah bi Ahlul Sunnah. The Ahlul Sunnah, they're, they're gentle with one another. And we know the Prophet Wasallam said, you know, that there isn't uh, that being, having rifq only uh, increases, uh, you know, th that rifq only makes a, a matter uh, better and more complete. That this, this is, so this shows us from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam to have rifq and lean and be gentle with one another. Also this hadith shows us the prohibition of having, uh, being harmful towards other individuals. And this hadith also warns us against al bulgh you know, of having hatred and spreading hatred between the believers. So that is imperative that we that we reflect on that, that we should not have hatred for one another, nor should we spread that hatred. How can we spread that hatred? What are some ways that we see this hatred being spread in this day and age? We see our brothers and sisters making YouTube videos and spreading hatred and enmity between one another. If you're going to make the YouTube, use it for ilm nafia. Make it so it's something that's beneficial for the people. Yes, and it's for rad ahl bid'ah. That's beneficial for the people as well. And making clear someone's mistakes. Yes, that's too. That's true. That's also beneficial. Ilm, that, that's also beneficial knowledge. But let's not busy the people and busy the people with hatred and enmity. Wa iyad billah min dalika. And a last benefit that will bring uh, that you know, and there's so many, but just one last benefit we'll mention is that it's also an obligation to have muhabba and love between uh, the Muslims and that we should avoid following our desires and our hawa, you know, and even I, I want to make a, a point because our, our scholars have mentioned this in many of their lectures and especially in this time and age because of the kathra to fitna, fitna that we have between uh, sometimes scholars and students of knowledge and, and other individuals that are on the same minhaj that we should be cautious of following our desires and we can follow our desires in many ways. We can follow our desires even by spreading this evil, by doing it not uh, when we make a refutation of someone, refuting someone's mistakes, refuting someone from Ahl Bidah, we have to know this is taqarrib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is a form of ibadah, this is a form of worship. It's not just, it's not about building you up or building your, your group of brothers and sisters up or your masjid up or your merkis up. No, it's about refuting their mistakes in order to uh, defend the, the Islamic Aqidah and in order to uh, protect the Muslims from their harm. These are forms of ibadah. So it takes what? It, it takes ikhlas. It takes ikhlas because it's ibadah. And what are the arkan of ibadah or what are the, 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 the pillars of ibadah or the foundations of having our deeds accepted? Ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah. Wa mutabat to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Had a minhaj of salaf asari. This is the methodology of the salaf asari. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is the muhabba that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made between the Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A Muslim akhul Muslim, you should do ba'dahu ba'la. So the Muslim is the brother to the Muslim brother, and they strengthen one another. They don't break each other uh, down. They're, they're, they're like one, one body. When one part of them is sick, the other part is sick. They're not destroying one another, making each other 
sick. So we have to deal with these various cancers that we, we deal with as an ummah and may Allah forgive us of our mistakes. And anything I said correct was from Allah to Barak ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.